Hello YouTube, it's Doss Gregor and welcome to a Gentuin review. A while back somebody asked if I still did these and I said you know, sort of. It all depends on if I run into any problems and lately things have been running very well with my machine. But the other day I decided to do a system update as I try to do every once in a blue moon, you know, at least once a month it's good to do a synchronization and update. And I ran into a few uh, problems, simple ones, but I thought I would share them with you, discuss with them with you a little bit of what I ran into, and just give you an idea of maybe being able to help somebody out there that's working on an update with a synchronization, because it's always scary sometimes, especially with Gen 2 users, if you're new to it, understanding what you should do or what to look for when you run into a compilation problem. So if we look at, and of course I always set up my console to record everything and to keep it until I close the console so that I can always go back and search through this. So when this happened I kept my windows for you guys so that we could go back and review instead of me having to try to duplicate the problem. So we bring up Chrome here or not Chrome, I'm sorry. I looked at the title there. I, I, I can explain that in a little bit. I was It was updating Chrome to 38, and I had to install the Chrome binary so that Flash works proper in all their internal workings so that YouTube works through Chrome. Uh, but first of all, I did the emerge-sync, and of course it goes through and starts copying everything as you can see here. And I'm not going to bore you with all the rest, so I'm going to pause it while I get to the end of it and get to the next section. And here we are at the end of that. You'll notice, of course, it does the performing global updates. And a lot of times after you haven't done a re an update for a while, there will normally be an update to Portage. So it says right here, an update to Portage is available. It's highly recommended that you update Portage now before any other packages. And it's important that you actually follow that. So what we do is an emerge dash one, which is the same thing as doing emerge dash dash one shot and spelling it out, portage, and it goes ahead and installs the latest version of portage for you. Now it's not a very big script, so it's easy to get through. And then afterwards, what I do is emerge dash avu capital N capital D world. Now what that stands for is A for ask, V for verbose, U for update, capital N stands for any new used flags. These over here are the used flags, for instance, like uh, Burke DB, GDBM, N uh, debug means that we're going are not going to build it with debug, you know, minus doc without the documentation, etc. But that's what the new used flags are. And then a capital D means deep. That means it's, it's going to try and look at all the dependencies of every package and make sure that if there's anything that's way deep down inside, that that is updated to what it needs to be for it to run. Now, sometimes it doesn't always work proper, but that's what it's supposed to do. As you can see, it starts immediately to find all those packages. And as you can see also from this list of long packages, there were a lot that I needed to update, evidently about 160 some odd packages that I needed to look at. So it goes through 156 packages, actually 101 updates, six new packages need to be, one in a new slot, 48 reinstalls, tells you what the size of it's going to be, and it says I have two conflicts. Well, I'm going to have to fix those conflicts. So this is another thing I want to talk about. It says, for instance, that I got a problem with my Chromium install. It says that Chromium 38, which is the latest stable version, conflicts with Chromium 36. And the reason is, I'm not sure if you can see this part here, it's very difficult because it's in blue, but I will read it to you. It says that it's re Chromium 36 is required by the plugins, Chrome binary plugins 36.0.1985, uh, etc. Now what that is, is... I installed and I had to install the Chrome binary plugins for Chromium so that I could get YouTube to work in Flash because they've now gone to their Pepper Flash and a lot of internal things that that you're required to use if you're going to use Chromium. 
there also, after that, were some problems with some use flags that it says here, the following use flags are necessary for you to proceed. And it says, you know, required by virtual MySQL and dev Perl DB D MySQL that you need to have MySQL using embedded use flag. Required by the video Caden Live yeah, and the world, MLT needs to use the, the FREI 0 or R, Caden Live, FFmpeg, and Melt. And required by these par these here, Soprano needs to be added to the Kanadi dash server. Would you like to change these? At that time, I said no because I wanted to fix this dependency issue right here first. So I ignored those for now. It also tells me that KCM underscore touchpad, which is what I use for my touchpad, is now masked and not working. So I have to figure that out. Now what it actually says here is it's a dead upstream and that I should be using KDE Miscellaneous KCM dash touchpad instead. Eventually I'll get to that, but for right now I can ignore it because it is working proper. So after looking at that, I went ahead and ran the emerge one more time just to verify that I had things properly in the setup and looked at that again. I then looked at to see the dash s chrome binary to see if I saw where that was. I went into the chrome binary plugins so that I could see first if there was a chrome binary plugin for the version of chromium that I wanted to install, which case there was with 38. So what I did was I screwed up first by using emerge dash dash unemerge without the space and realized that ah, I messed up. I did a emerge dash dash unmerge chrome binary plugins and that will remove, of course, the older version for 36 so that it will allow then the Chromium to update without error. I then did the emerge avu nd world again. And if we get down to the bottom of that, we will see now we have 162 packages that it's going to update. And I still haven't fixed my use changes. So this time, I say yes to the answer. Would you like to add these changes to your config file? Now the reason why it asks me this question is because I have set up in my make.conf to if I, was, and this is why I always use the dash A for ask, I have it set up to go ahead and create and set these things up and put them in there and ask me right away so I don't have to go in manually with it. So once I did that, I said yes. Of course it writes it to it, so then you're going to be asked to do the etc-update and it says that there's a change in package portage package.use I hit one to view those and of course it pretty much says the exact same thing we just looked at the required for this we need to do that required for that we need to do this etc etc and because I'm okay with those changes I then said one replace original with the update you always want to be careful because after the update it wanted to update my sudoers file to the default and of course I've edited my sudoers file to give myself access and some other things and you don't want it to undo that so you always have to make sure you're paying attention to what is required to be updated in some of those using the etc update you don't always want to say replace original with update if it's a file that you've edited yourself then you'll always want to say delete the update keeping your original as is because sometimes it will want to put it back to the default once we've done that, we can run the emerge world again with those same arguments right here. And you will see that at the end of it, we have 162 packages. Would you like to merge these packages? And there's no problems. There's still two conflict blocks, but it will fix those now. And as you can see, it starts to go off. Now, as you also notice too, LibreOffice 4.263, Oh, that always takes me at least an hour or two for that one to download. But you got to remember, too, I've got a Core, i, Core i7 with about 8 gigs of RAM dedicated to the compiling. Now, on some of my older systems, that could take me 4 or 5 hours in the old days with some of my old systems. So it goes ahead and updates everything. And I'm going to pause it here to get to the end of that. Okay, and now... <laughs>
we are back at the end of those 162 packages you'll notice here that the real time it took was 305 minutes to compile all 162 including LibreOffice and if we go up just a little bit I'll kind of point out that there's a lot of messages and this is why it's also really good to change it up in here in your settings area into the current profile for instance under the scrolling to have unlimited scroll back because if you weren't watching it could have scrolled far enough that you wouldn't see what all of these things say and each of these might have something important that you might have to look at it adds and says for instance you might need to want to do this or you might want to do that or you might want to consider such and such and such and such um, you've just upgraded from an older version of Python for instance and it's probably going to tell me I need to be doing something else please adjust Python targets as needed and re-emerge with new use or change the use options to rebuild packages installing Python modules. That's why it's important to go through and kind of look at these because it's going to tell you what you need to do and when you need to do it. Uh, for right now, we'll get back down to the bottom because I want to discuss at the end of all of these updates what comes next. You will see here existing preserved li libs for the libraries. Now, there are some problems that this is going to find, and that's the good thing about the new way that this works. You'll find that, for instance, it says here that these libraries, which are used by these programs, are needing to be rebuilt. And it has created a new package or command that you can use, emerge at preserved-rebuild. And when you do that, it goes ahead and finds the problem areas with these libraries and tries to rebuild them for you. Now for right now I ignored that and as you can see too it says config file sudoers needs updating so it's reminding me that that needs to be done and that's why I, I remember to tell you that when I looked at it it's like oh yeah it wants to take out the line that I had to put in there to give myself ability for having sudo access or super user do access you know and it wanted to take it out and put it back in the default. Now here, I went ahead and checked. I just wanted to see first in Chromium if they had something that you could use as a flag that would allow it to go ahead and install those binary programs that's required for it. It did not, as I noticed, have that. So I double checked these again to get the right name. I also did a quick search on it on looking at, at these uh, Emerge AV Chrome binary plugins to see what it would try to install as you can see it's trying to install thir version 39 but Gen 2 is only installing right now 38 as I'm doing this so I don't want to use version 39 because it has to match that package so I said no I don't want to do that and what I had to do was Emerge dash AV A for ask V for verbose equals Chrome binary plugins 38.0.2125.104 underscore p1 to match this ebuild so that it would install the same version as the version it had put on there. I hope I'm not being too confusing. It also said that because of that I needed to have keyword changes so I said yes go ahead and do the ETC and then I set up the ETC update and as you see it says sudoers in there and the package accept keywords I went ahead and looked this is when I looked at the sudoers and you'll see here that in sudoers that it's trying to take out some of the commands and it's doing the update there it wants to add this command alias reboot which probably needs to be there it wants to take out though down here you know things like the we, those who are in the wheel and and this is what you can use this wheel all equals all no password all if you put your user in the wheel object and use this you can grant them sudo access very easily I didn't want to have that taken away though and then of course here we're looking at the next package for the accept keywords and you'll see that it's wanting to write in to accept the plugins for Chrome binary and that version and it's going to do the tilde amd64 so that the keyword is proper for it to do that once we've accepted that we try this again it sees it say yes to it all and it goes ahead and installs proper and there we have it now it still comes back with the preserved libraries that need to be updated so 
you know, we're getting ahead of ourselves. I did that on a different area so that I could show you. And I came over here and I tried to install those. And as it got towards the end, it actually died on me on running the man DB. Now, this is getting kind of long, but I'll try to make it a little bit faster. When something fails on you with the compiling, you want to go back a little bit until you can see where it's failing. As you can see up here, this all looks good. But then we get to right here, and these two lines, or these lines start to tell us that there is a problem. We see, for instance, right here, can't locate local PO4A chooser.pm. Well, a lot of times when packages get updated, the Perl modules need to be updated as well. And we have not done that for a while. So this package evidently needs that, and it's not there. So I left it as it is. And that tells you you should look for PO4A. That gives you your clue right there. You'll see sometimes it'll tell you a library that might not be right, or in this case, the Perl module that might not be right, and that's going to point you what to look for. So immediately I came back over here, and in this section, I did a search on PO4, which brought up that, yes, there is a package PO4A, and that there is a new version of it. So I said, okay, let's go ahead and install that. So I do an emerge-vpo4a. It's going to update it to the newest version. It does all of that. We kind of get down here to the bottom. And once it finished installing that, I went ahead, it came back and still said, of course, that we had the preserved libraries. Let me get back there because this shouldn't be too far to get back up there. Let me pause it so you don't have to watch it. And here we are. It finished installing the PO4A, and it says, of course, existing preserved libraries. You notice it's a lot smaller now, so we have that. So we go ahead and ran it again, and this time it's just going to install the version or the package that blew up prior when I did it. So man da 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 blah, blah. man dash db. So we install that once again, and instead of it erring because we now have it all proper, it's good. It sees it. It installs. Took about a minute, 13 seconds. It says here to install, good to go, and everything is now updated. And that is that. I guess the biggest thing I wanted to discuss was, as we, as we looked at, you had some problems first with the eMERGE world. We resolved them. We then took care of any extra use flags that needed to be done. We then ran the update and verified everything was good. We then ran the eMERGE preserve libs so that it can find those that need to be rebuilt. It blew up. We were able then to look at where it blew up and see where the error is here and figure out that it was the PO4A module, that a Perl that needed to be fixed. We updated PO4A. We then reran the preserve libs update and it installed everything correctly because now it saw the right version of the chooser application for local PO4A chooser.pm. And that resolved everything in the system. So I hope that might help someone. I also hope that if you're doing an eMERGE world or need to do an update to your world, this helps you out. I'm sorry I kind of went on a little bit long. It's now up to 18, almost 19 minutes here. So I will say whatever you're having, whether it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever it is, enjoy it. Thank you for watching. I hope this assisted in some way, shape, or form. And keep watching as I will be trying to get back to doing some Linux distro reviews. And I have been requested to see if I could do an update as to how to install Netflix inside Gen 2. So I will be trying to look at doing that as well. I will have to see if I can do that in my test box so that I can record it there since I already have it working within this version right now. So thank you very much, guys. Bye.